Well, good morning, so we're going to get started. I have the pleasure to introduce um, Joe Goose, president of Cinebon. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Good. Everybody well caffeinated, having a great, having a great conference? Good. Good. Well, I'm uh, excited to be here. Thank you, Lisa and Chris, for inviting me. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great to be able to relate to you some of the journey that we've taken with Revel over the last, gosh, I'd say it's like 12 to 18 months, and, and talk to you a little bit about uh, our experience, uh, where we're headed to Cinnabon, and, and more importantly, where we're headed with Revel. Um, and, and looking at how this is going to help us continue to propel the brand forward. Um, so uh, just a little bit about um, Cinnabon um, is um, a 30 year old brand. Um, we've gone through ups and downs. It, you know, it, it was born in 1985 in Seattle, Rich and um, Greg Komen, uh, w along with um, uh, Geraldine Brousseau set out to create the world's greatest cinnamon roll, um, and that's exactly what they did. And it, the concept absolutely took off for the first 10 years. Uh, then it started trading ownership and changing hands, and there was a focus on international. There was a lack of investment, lack of direction, and the brand fell out of favor. Um, and I'm sure you've seen those Cinnabons around that are not particularly pleasing, um, although tempting because of our aroma old school beacons um, for, for those of you here in, in uh, Silicon Valley. But the, uh, it's probably been in the last three to five years where we've really re-engaged our franchisees, re-engaged our guests um, on social and uh, social media and through our digital presence, where we've really started to get momentum back for the brand. And we've, we've experienced some pretty uh, dramatic growth. Our comp sales, I, I can't speak to specific numbers because we're privately held, and so I would be, I would, I would be, uh, get my hand slapped if I was to tell you, but we have, we have top of the industry comps right now, and, and very significant, um, very significant unit growth. Uh, what I would tell you is from a, it was maybe a few years ago, our, our average unit volumes were around 350. Our last disclosure, uh, puts us at just shy of 460. Um, unit level profitability in that time frame is up almost 30% for franchisees. So we are, we are definitely on the upswing um, and, and growing rapidly. But that's with that momentum, and, and you know, I attribute a lot of that again to the engagement with franchisees, their execution of the brand, uh, re-engaging guests in and around a, a brand that truly has what I call a lot of latent equity. Um, it really is truly synonymous with cinnamon rolls. And, and so, uh, but what, what else? What's next? What are you going to do uh, going forward? Um, and so that's where we said, well, we don't really know where everything's going, but we certainly want to be prepared when we get there. Um, and so uh, when I showed up with the brand, uh, look, going into bakeries, we have a real opportunity for renovating those bakeries and really bringing them up to speed from a, from a brand standard standpoint and making them look new and fresh. And so on, on, the, on uh, the technology or system side of things, we also maybe had half our bakeries had a point of sale. So I saw that as, as we started to pick up the momentum, and this was at the beginning of what a, this period of growth of the last three years, as a real opportunity. Um, to say, what should we be doing? Uh, so we've got all these bakeries that need to get remodeled, all these bakeries that need to be, have technology put in. I mean, I, it was, I was lucky if I found a phone in the back of a Cinnabon, much less an iPad. Um, and so it was a real opportunity for us to say, what can and should we do now that we've got momentum in investing behind this brand and continuing the momentum that we have today? Um, and that's when we came upon Revel. Um, it was, why, let's not just keep going with micro C7 and t sticking these dinosaurs in there because uh, we knew that was, this was going to drop off the face of the earth at some point and they've already withdrawn support and we're supporting our franchisees. We have a significant amount of franchisees within Focus Brands. I probably should have mentioned that. So Cinnabon is owned by Focus Brands, who's owned by Roar Capital. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, Roar Capital, um, from a food service portfolio standpoint, probably would rank in the top five um, in the world 
just behind uh, a few others. They, they own Arby's, Carl's Jr., Hardee's. As of yesterday, Jimmy John's. Um, <laughs> so uh, they've been pretty, pretty aggressive. And then we're within Focus Brands where there's Cinnabon, Annie Ann's Pretzels, uh, Carvel Ice Cream, uh, Cinnabon, uh, Moe's Southwest Grill, Schlotzky's Deli, and McAllister's Deli. And five of our six brands are now testing Revel. We're, we're past testing. We're, we'll be at almost 100 units uh, by the end of this year. And um, Annie Ann's will be, will be rapidly coming on board shortly. Uh, so uh, it is definitely our, our, our point of sale of choice. And we looked at a lot of different solutions, a lot of tablet-based solutions, and it was, it was a very clear winner with Revel. And, and so I think probably one of the most attractive things, um, and I, I'll, I'll get to it later, is listen, it, it's an iPad it, and it's on an iOS platform, the most stable, most used platform in the world. Um, and, and I was very impressed with, with the team and how dynamic they were and how collaborative they were. So we were, we were definitely thinking, well, you know what, if, if nothing else, even if we don't get it right the first time, I know we will get there. Um, and, that's, and that's really what uh, allowed us to take the leap. But I'm going to take you through a few of the other things that we're doing with the brand and how Revel fits in the context of that. Um, really, it, we had a great meeting with, with, with Lisa and Chris and the team just a few weeks ago on talking about how, to, how are we going to continue to elevate the guest experience. So just FYI, we use the word guest because we're in hospitality, so we don't use the word customer. But um, how do we continue to, to leverage Revel and, as a platform and then continue to innovate the other parts of our brand to make sure that we're relevant in an ever-changing world? So I'll take you through a few of those things. Then, of course, we'll talk a little bit more about Revel and how that plays into, into um, our future. So four key things. Um, one is, is really contemporizing the consumer experience and really looking at um, what is happening and, and how we look and feel and show up to the consumer, or our guest, I'm sorry. Um, the other is innovating our, our menu, obviously, and continuing to evolve our offerings to, to our guests in a more relevant way. The third is obviously commuting effectively and efficiently with our guests. Um, I'm very proud of what we've been able to do as a brand with a very, very modest budget in terms of uh, our impact on a broad basis and how much we get. And I'll, I'll show you a short video that encompasses some of the highlights of, of what we've been able to achieve. Um, and then lastly, of course, is, is, is the team member experience. And you may say, well, where's technology on that? Well, technology is all through that. It's an underpinning and an enabler of it, and particularly when it comes to the team member experience, and I'll talk more about that. So you, everybody's probably heard millennials, millennials, millennials. That's the next big segment. They're going to overtake boomers in terms of spending, in terms of an importance in, from a, a business standpoint. And the good news for us is in a recent survey by Technomic, uh, we were named as one of the top five QSR brands with millennials. Um, and we feel like we're in very good company with, the, with people of the likes of Chick-fil-A um, and uh, In-N-Out, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with here uh, on the West Coast. Um, and so uh, that's the good news, but you can't get complacent. And so what are we going to do to continue to stay relevant? So first and foremost was really contemporizing the look of the brand. Um, we wanted it to be familiar. We didn't want to abandon our equity. We have a lot of brand equity. We have a 95% uh, brand awareness amongst consumers, which is enviable. There's very, very few brands that, that can achieve that. Um, we also wanted to make sure that we were leveraging and continuing to play up the authenticity of the brand and our baking heritage. And we are also looking at um, you know, how can we be true and not, not try to be something we're not. So um, this is our new bakery look. Um, you'll probably, if, if those of you who are familiar with Cinnabon uh, or have seen uh, some of our older versions, you'll notice a pretty dramatic change. Um, not the least of which is the logo itself. So that's a, that was a pretty big leap. We hadn't touched that in 15 years. You can see it's cleaner lines, but it stay tr stays true to the colors. It brings in more of the teal, uh, which is an accent color for us. So it, it truly 
uh, I think is, is a great evolution of, of the look and feel of the brand. But as you look and see, uh, you know, when we t look through the different elements, uh, we really were looking, when we did research around the brand, what we found is not only do people think of Cinnabon when they think of uh, indulgence, but they also think of it in a sense of belonging. So it's, it's reminiscent for, for, for a lot of people and they think about when they used to go to the mall with their friends or when they were baking with Pillsbury um, with mom in the kitchen. Um, and so that's, that's where we really said, well, you know, it, it's our insp design inspiration really should be some blend between kind of a French patisserie and, home kit in a modern home kitchen. So you see the lighter, the lighter palette tones. You see a much larger bakery case that enables much more dynamic and interesting merchandising. Um, you see a much more prominent menu board that does more storytelling than telling people about price. Uh, there's more emphasis in and around ingredients. Um, and our cinnamon, our cinnamon most people don't know, is brought from, in from Sumatra. Um, it is, it, we scoured the world for it. It is proprietary, it is unique to us. And, and so those are the things that we're trying to play up in this. Now, I know some of you, when I say French patisserie, think, oh yeah, right. And, but you know, the, I would tell you the analog is, uh, if you look at Howard Schultz, uh, the account, Italian coffee bar was his inspiration for Starbucks. Well, our, the French patisserie is our inspiration. We're not a French patisserie, just as Starbucks is no Italian coffee bar. Um, but that's the inspiration that we took from it. And so far, it's been very well received by franchisees, by our guests, by, um, by developers, uh, and it certainly moves us forward. So that, that's what also, again, makes this a, a, a perfect time for us to say, how, what are the things do we need to innovate around in the guest experience? And that's where we had this unique moment of time. Not only do we have a lot of bakeries that needed to be remodeled and new bakeries opening, all the time, but now we also have a chance to roll out a new technology platform um, into the bakeries. Um, and again, that I'll, I'll speak more about that with Revel later in the presentation. So when we talk about menu, uh, one of the big things, obviously, you know, it's it's interesting being the the president of Cinnabon because you're kind of pseudo famous because everybody knows the brand. So, short story, um, uh, I have a seven year old son. And I was getting him ready for school. And he said, so dad, you going to sell some Cinnabons today? Because he definitely knew I worked at Cinnabon because I brought that <laughs> home. And uh, I said, yes, Jack, I am going to go sell some Cinnabons today. He said, what do you do at Cinnabon? I said, well, Jack, I'm, I'm the president. He said, you're the president? <laughs> so, so now he, he walks around and tells everybody about that. But it's, it's, it's interesting because it's, when, I, when I tell people about it, they're like, oh, Cinnabon, I love that so much. Please keep it away from me. I can't do that, the classic roll, right? And the classic roll is 880 calories. I mean, it's a whopper, um, but, and, and it's phenomenal. But how do we make that more accessible? Because the other piece of, of, of the brand that we can talk more about is that Cinnabon is a billion dollar brand. Cinnabon, but 70% of that or more is licensing, not franchise, and so, um, what you find is, is, you know, our relationship with Pillsbury, uh, you know, our relationship with Taco Bell. Uh, you'll find us in vodka. We're in Keurig coffee and K-Cups. Um, we have s over 70 different consumer products and, and licensed products within food service in 70,000 locations. Um, those partners invest 20 times the amount that we do in the brand from a, from a uh, marketing standpoint. We can't afford to be on TV and all that, they're, they're investing in that. So it's, it's really what I call accretive ubiquity. And it truly, we truly benefit from that. So, um, but how do, but what, what I think that the notion there is, is that people want more. They want more cinema, but they want it in their way. And they want it in a way that's more permissible. Um, and so this first piece here is around bites. And bites have been being sold for a long time. We have, uh, uh, one of our illustrious franchisees here in the room, Scott Gilman, who's done a phenomenal job uh, opening one of these new bakeries, as well as uh, using Revel, as well as selling a ton of these bites. But we weren't doing it broadly. We will be on a national launch uh, of bites within the next two weeks. Um, and the tests are giving us a very, very strong read on this. Um, and it's really about permissibility. Um, so uh, along those lines, 
uh, we don't do a great job in beverages. Um, it, don't do a terrible job. We have some good things around our cinnamon roll iced coffee. I mean, before there was iced coffee, we were one of the first. Um, but we haven't really innovated around that. We haven't really continued to be relevant. And so we'll be looking at things like coffee and, and such. We were here actually um, and did a coffee tour and a bakery tour here in San Francisco. I mean, how awesome. You guys just have so many really, really cool concepts. And I, I know many of you are probably here. I saw many, many Revels systems as well. And uh, it's truly inspirational. And I think it's, it's, it, it, that's where innovation in this industry really happens is on the on the cutting edge with the independence, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, and, and really understanding and what's going on in coffee, because this is really pretty cutting edge here in San, San Francisco. So um, you know, we're not gonna be a coffee house, but we absolutely need to be selling a lot more coffee. Um, it is, we, we, we need to be doing a better job and just taking that up. And this is not a play to become like Duncan, where we're gonna reorient the whole menu. Um, we're a bakery, but we, we should be selling more beverages. Our beverage incidence, which is defined as uh, transactions that include a beverage, is very low relative to the industry. So that's a big opportunity for us. And finally, we look at savory. And this is very important in our non-traditional locations, meaning not malls. So airports, travel centers, um, amusement parks, where there's more day parts because malls don't open until 10 a.m. So there really isn't a lot in the way of breakfast. Um, you know, it'll be a stretch for us to get into that snack as meal look in, from a mall perspective, but we're gonna continue to explore it. Um, our sister brand, Annie Ann's, has done a phenomenal job and built a huge business around pretzel dogs. Uh, mini dogs, pretzel dogs, you know, pizza pretzels, they've done a really, really nice job with that. Um, and it's a great brand, and we're fortunate to have them as a partner. But those are the things that we're focused on in the short term from a menu standpoint. So, you know, as, as many of you, if you have kids, you know, you've got, they, they're better at using your Apple devices than, than, than you are probably, right? My three-year-old can, can operate an iPad without any training. But you've got, you've got to win in the moments that, that, that matter. Um, and really understanding how we bring that to life. My predecessor, Kat Cole, did a wonderful job really pushing us onto social media and the digital world. And we've continued to build on that. Um, right now, we do no paid media. Zero. We're just now starting to explore paid digital, but we don't. We do no traditional media at all, at all whatsoever, and it's a huge, huge plus for us. Um, and and really thinking about how do we play in the world of mobile, um, and we don't really right now, other than the social media platforms that are naturally there. Um, that is one of the things that we're definitely talking to Chris and Lisa about as they start to evolve the platform. And, and it, it becomes more of a revenue generating. And that's why I call it a technology platform, not just a point of sale. It, it definitely is a point of sale, but it's so much more. And we'll talk more about that. But this is, you, know, you start to evolve into that. That is a big focus for us over the next 12 to 18 months is to evolve into that, especially in the food service industry where you've got Starbucks and Domino's and Panera and all of them are outperforming the industry by a large margin. And they're all very much attributing those, those comp sales to their technology platforms. And so we're blessed in the fact that we're able to deliver those kinds of comps without it. What's exciting is what will we be able to do when we get it? Um, and so there's more to come on that for us. Um, so here I'm gonna, I'm gonna step away and, and, and I'll let you, this is a video that gives you a highlight of a lot of the efforts uh, that we've done around social media, but also around our, our public relations efforts which is the, a, I'd say 95% of our, our spend as a brand um, is, is in and around unpaid media. To stay away from you so long I should have known there'd come a day when you be gone. This woman came out and she was wonderful and she absolutely knew how to make a Cinnabon. <laughs> that knowledge is preserved. So, how are you saying that you her. know how to make a Cinnabon? I do. 
You put me in front of a bunch Just of margarine. Just when you couldn't have got better in my eyes. <laughs> and a, <laughs> I can make one, two specks. Here's what we're going to bring back, guys. We're bringing back Cinnabons. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Cinnabons haven't gone away, okay? They haven't gone anywhere, but there's just not enough of them, all right? I don't want to have to go to the airport every time I want a cinnamon roll. There should be a Cinnabon in every Starbucks on every corner. Honestly, I want people holding out Cinnabons uh, on the street like people with cups of water during a marathon. Do you know what I mean? I want to be walking and just be able to have a Cinnabon at any time. Cinnabons, we're bringing you back. So this is a beautiful, beautiful serving of Cinnabon. Yesterday we talked about what our secret service names would be based off that question at the debate. First thing that popped in my head was cinnamon bun, then into yes. Cinnabon, which makes more yeah. sense. And so Cinnabon was nice enough to send these over. Yeah. And how can we not enjoy it? This is incredible. I, I mean, mean, look at the, I mean, that's art. No, this is that's not food, that's delicious. art. All right, I'm, I'm going right in. Yeah. See, you just like get it. Game, you and get you it deliver. all over. That's what oh. I'm talking about right there. Hey. Hey. Cinnabon bun. Oh, how did you know? They told us. Hey, they I'm told obsessed. Us. Weakness. Finally tonight here, Made in America, the sweet guilty pleasure, the smell luring you in at the mall and at the airport, and so we asked, what's the story behind it? Walk into just about any mall in America and you can smell it. I just follow the smell. You'll know it at home. This is the smell made in America. It draws you right in, doesn't it? It does. In fact, it's part of their strategy. Rumor has it that the founders of this company knew the power of this aroma. Oh, absolutely. Cinnabon. In fact, the original recipe comes from a grandmother in Seattle, I knew you're about Pete to. Mason. Okay, so what's better, your toy or the roll? <laughs> 800 bakeries in malls and towns across the U.S., 4,000 employees. The first store in Seattle 30 years ago. Oh, those are beautiful. Gorgeous. There she is, Geraldine Brousseau, who perfected her own grandmother's recipe. Mm. Endless tweaking in the kitchen, and this is the very first Cinnabon ever photographed. That Cinnabon today is the Cinnabon we generated 30 years ago. A blank canvas. They put me to the test. It all starts with the dough, rolling it out to an exact size. Margarine and cinnamon. Then roll it up. Two inch slices. Who knew? And right into the oven. Careful, careful. Then of course, the famous icing. Uh oh. They're gonna know. A little extra icing. Can we just get a close-up of this one in particular? That is talent. These poor folks are afraid because they're gonna get one of mine. <laughs> that signature smell at the mall with these three words in mind. That damn Cinnabon next door is taking all our business. What kind of low lives would prefer those to these fine desserts? I found a secret password to the Cinnabon kitchen! <laughs> This is heavy. What do you have to get out of your bag? Something important. What is it? The rest of my Cinnabon. Max, that's our competition. The reason for our failure is that piece of crap. I mean, I can't... Oh, my God. That is delicious. Today, we are launching Cinnabon Sausage Bites. So it is a premium sausage bite wrapped in our world-famous dough that we use in our cinnamon rolls. And here we have them. They look absolutely delicious. You can find them in airports here, and Pilot and Flying J travel centers. years started as a simple concept cinnamon roll uh, expanded to a billion dollar brand congratulations you've each just won cinnabon treats for one year cinnabon celebrates 30 years since the first bakery was opened in 1985 at sea tac mall hey it's cinnabon's birthday today we gotta sing happy birthday happy birthday to you Yeah, looks a 
awful lot like Cinnabon. Well, thank you, Brad. What a nice thing to say. Mm -hmm. It tastes exactly like Cinnabon. In fact, same shape, same swirl, same frosting. So that was just that was just last year. So and and the amount of a lot of those um, a lot of that was just hustle. Uh, the James Corden thing, the follow-on was after he talked about us on that show. We sent him a bunch of Cinnabons, then he went on a two-minute rant on on tel on uh, primetime TV. I mean, probably thirty dollars with a cinnamon rolls, generating about I don't know two three hundred thousand dollars with a media value. So that we continue to do that, and, and it, it is uh, the, the mentions that we get and the whole Will Ferrell thing. Um, we went to the premiere, and uh, it was surreal sitting there watching him talk about because that was only one of three segments that they talked about Cinnabon um, in the movie. And he's sitting directly behind me in the, in the theater. And at the after party, we did a pop-up bakery, and there's this Victoria's Secret model like noshing down on a Cinnabon next to me. And it's just like... The, the value of the brand and really being able to get those placements is truly, um, it's, it's truly amazing. And, and the team, I'm really proud of the team because they've done a lot of hustle to get there. Uh, it is truly earned media. Uh, while it may be unpaid, it is, is definitely earned. Um, but all that media and all that buzz doesn't mat matter if we can't deliver at the bakery. Um, and really one of the things that we're starting to look at as we, as we start to get into the, the operational side of it is how do we make sure that the team member, the guest experience never exceeds the team member experience? Um, how do we make sure that their experience is great? So that is about updating the look of the bakery, uh, updating the uniforms that they're t-shirts and shirts that people actually want to wear um, and are proud to wear. Uh, and it's using technology that's relevant. Um, which means not an old cash register. Um, and so uh, all of those things were considerations as we started to move forward. Um, so, you know, what's our secret recipe or our awesome sauce? And that is coming down to the fancy way of saying employee value proposition. So what are the key components of that? Um, one is, is truly leadership. And there we've really taken up our game in terms of how we're evaluating new franchisees, who we're bringing into the business, because we know Full stop, if you want a great team member, they will only come to work for a great bakery manager, and a great bakery manager will only come work for a great franchisee. And that, and so, so therefore, we're putting a lot of emphasis on, the, on that. Um, the environment, I talked about that, upgrading the bakery itself. Um, training, uh, and how do we continue to take up our game in training and do it in a relevant way, leveraging technology. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, the technology itself uh, and the platform. So um, as we look at this and the different components of it, um, we're really looking at, looking at these three components. So um, let me just dive right in. Uh, obviously, first and foremost, and everybody here I believe is pretty familiar with it, is, is Revel. And that makes us more, more relevant uh, from a team member perspective because you know, we had a story, one of our uh, uh, senior leaders in operations went into one of the first bakeries that had Revel and they all of a sudden got real busy. And all they had to do was just step up to the register and just start going. Never been trained, but just you know, could figure it out. Um, that's, that's huge. I mean, it's, there's a cost savings component of it, but then of course there's a relevancy component and not just to the team member, but also to the guest. How does the guest perceive us as a brand when they see, see a beautiful looking iPad display that has a guest facing um, uh, component in having that, that iPad that faces them, which by the way is even more real estate as we move to a more digital environment and all digital menu boards, is, is for us to continue to message and connect with them. So all the way around, um, uh, we feel like that's a, that's a big win and has been for us. Um, the other component of this is Apple Pay. So when, we've, when we started rolling out Revel, we got a call from Apple and they said, hey, we, you're here, you're running, rolling out Apple Pay. I said, yes, I guess we are. <laughs> so the, the, that's a perfect example of, of 
while I didn't know all the things that were going to happen and all the things that would come, I knew that partnering with Revel would make me better prepared for what's coming. And that's a perfect example of that. And we have yet to really, truly leverage that. We've met with them a number of times. We have a lot of work to do in terms of activating that and bringing it with, uh, together with our, um, our loyalty platform that we're developing. Um, but some of the things that I've seen that other brands have already done are very, very powerful. And then being able to start to integrate that with CRM and the Revel system is going to be really, really exciting. Um, because as, if you look at what's happening in the industry, it's all about seamless experiences. That it's just, you know, I know eventually we can talk about hands-free and all that, and that's all coming. But, but really, um, I think for Starbucks, being a heavy user myself, their ability to continue to make their brand more accessible um, and, and really innovate around that is, has truly been the breakthrough from them. And they've cited that in, in several of their quarterly earnings results. So um, it's, it's exciting and it's, it's great that this platform, together with Apple Pay and Revel, that we'll, we'll be able to be very much prepared for whatever is coming. The other um, benefit of moving to this platform, uh, which again, Revel was a great partner, as we said, listen, we were looking at PlayerLink, um, which is a app-based training system. And so the great part is, is we said, well, can we bundle in one more uh, iPad and load Revel on there? And it has everything you need to know about running a bakery. So gone are the days of the big binders that sit in the back room and gather dust with your manuals and procedures. We will be going 100% paperless uh, by the first quarter um, relative to our training, training manual. That additional iPad also allows us to, or allows the manager to access the Revel reporting, uh, the labor scheduling. Um, it, we are also launching a performance management dashboard where it has a fully integrated metrics around voice of guest, uh, brand standards, um, customer complaints, our mystery shopper, sales, and it'll give a visual dashboard to the bakery manager in terms of how am I doing? How am I doing on product? How am I doing on service? Um, and, and allow them to quickly make adjustments. So um, it's for, for many, many reasons, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. Moreover, when you talk about millennials, so we talked about them as a guest, well, they're also gonna be the main pool for labor. Um, and how do you stand out in an ever increasing, uh, increasingly competitive environment in terms of being that uh, employer of choice? Well, we've got a good looking bakery, we've got great products, we have relevant technology, those things matter. Uh, and, they're, and millennials are visual learners. They're not used to staring at binders, they're used to staring at iPads. Um, and so for all those reasons, I think that's gonna put us in a much, much better place. So let's talk a little bit more about Revel. Um, some of this may be relatively uh, uh, evident to you as you've already been, been close to it, but you know, the ease of use always on, the, the security is, is fantastic. I mean, when we, uh, Scott was with us when we, we discussed this in Denver and he was, he was one of um, the first to test it. We started and say, well, okay, so first, first and foremost, um, uh, you know, we're ne it, it's, 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 it's never going to go down. Um, second, you know, the hardware is going to be easier. Third, PCI compliance is, is much, much simpler as opposed to a 100-question survey. It's now 10. Um, there, you know, it's, it's, oh, by the way, it's also going to be less expensive than, than what we're paying for Micros right now. Uh, hardware is going to be easier. I said, and then, and then it just said stop. That's good. We're good. Let's just, let's move forward. We didn't even get into the cool stuff yet. Just on the basics alone, we were, you know, we were in a, we were in a really good place. And so um, as we've rolled out to an enterprise level, we've had other challenges to, as we're managing now almost 100 units, um, but we're getting through it. And the Rebel team has been, been, been great in working with us on that. And, uh, and I know we will be better off for it because now we've got some of our other brands in our portfolio that have fully deployed point of sale systems that are falling off the face of the earth and they're gonna have to figure out what to do. Um, and, and so, but they'll get there. Um, and I think as focus brands, we will get there all together. And we are also testing this internationally. Um, uh, we have, I wanna say, roughly 1,500 international locations 
uh, so, and over 5,000 locations in total. So that's also an important component. And when I was talking with the international team, I mean, they were even more excited because, um, you know, it, it, having things cloud-based for them, having visibility to that, having training that's tablet-based is huge. You know, shipping paper binders around the world is not terribly efficient. Um, also, you know, making changes and updating in different languages. Uh, for all those reasons, it makes it a great platform from that perspective as well. So talk about the capabilities of the future. So analytics, we've already made some good strides there. There's great reporting. Um, I know in the new release, there's even more robust reporting, and we're going to keep pushing on that. Um, and so that's obviously the, 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 the new app and being able to access that um, from, from your phone is huge for our operators and our franchisees, um, which then brings you to the second point of access. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's a huge step forward relative to the old, old systems uh, in terms of having that access to data. And then back of house management. Now, this is a really big one um, for us. Uh, because of our volumes, when I used to work for Yum Brands, and uh, at, at KFC we were rolling out a back of house system. That back of house system would be fifteen, twenty thousand dollars easy. That's like that would be the start. Well, now um, uh, I can start to put pulse in labor management, food cost management. We're about to roll out an automated production system based on rate of sale. Um, and it's interesting, there's a parallel between Cinnabon and KFC in that we just, um, unlike a lot of food concepts, we, and if you have any baking that goes on, you know you just can't throw more labor at it and catch up. You have to start baking ahead. Because if you're out of position in the rush, it's out. So that's huge for us. We couldn't remotely afford the kind of systems that were out there um, given our volumes of roughly a half million dollars. Um, but now, with a cloud-based iPad technology ecosystem, we're pulling those things in. And we're seeing some very real benefits in terms of you know, reducing our labor, being smarter about scheduling it. And it's all because we now have a system that, with, with Revel that allows us to do that. So that, that's, uh, how did I do on time? Pretty good, actually, surprisingly. Um, the, uh, that's, that's really the, the nutshell for us, and I think you know, it's really exciting some of the new developments that are coming with Revel that I, you know, I touch on here, but, but really they're not in the presentation yet because we're still working on them. Um, so uh, it's been a great experience to date, and uh, very excited for the partnership uh, going forward. So thank you for your time today. Hopefully that was relevant. I don't know if we have do we, questions or do you, or I don't know if we have time, but. So I don't, I don't know if anybody had any questions on anything that, that, I, that I discussed or, yes? Uh, so you mentioned that you have the uh, training software that, you, that you're using. Do you have anything for like workflow management that you, you like a lot with Cinema and Cinema? Well, that's what I talked about where we actually collaborated with Revel to, uh, we call it PACE. PACE is our workflow management system in terms of uh, estimating where we have to, how much do you have to roll, when do you have to proof, when do you bake, when do you pull off the hot plate, when do you put into packs, those kinds of things. So now we we have we've got it in beta right now, and I think we'll be testing it in the next in the next month. Specific to, to Cinnabon. Yeah, it's a proprietary to Cinnabon. So. Yeah. We'd love to see that. Great. That yes. You know, they've been really pretty fantastic. They're, they're, they've been doing this a while now. Um, honestly, we don't hear a whole lot from them directly. Um, you know, I know my CEO is in constant contact with them. But um, honestly, they, they really let us run our business. I mean, to get this job, they have, they have, like a, they have a process where it's, it's pretty rigorous, like, you know, psychological profiling and all that. So they do a lot of upfront due diligence, and then they let the horses run. Um, like I was worried, like Cinnabon was one of their first brands that they ever bought. Um, and I was changing the logo and the store concept and all this. And I was like, oh boy, we better let them know. And they're like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. Question? About pains of being with a, in a private equity world. I think it really depends on your ownership. I mean, I know there's some that are really, really into the details and are very prescriptive. That is not Roar Capital. Um, you know, they, 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 they hire... You know, and they're very, very diligent in terms of who they put in in leadership. 
and, and then they let the horses run. So that, from my experience, it's been great. They've been supportive. I, I reach out to our chairman uh, every so often and get advice, and he, he provides guidance, but you know, he's not, they're not in there every day telling us what to do. Um, and fortunately, we've been really, really successful. So it really depends on the firm. Yes? Great question. If you have that answer, let me know. It would save me a lot of time. I, you know, I, I, I saw a lot of great, you know, right now we've got like a bun thing that's drip caught. I mean, it's crap. It's crap. It's not good. And uh, I know Scott has been working with us, and he's got a, some, some uh, ideas and platforms. But some of the stuff I saw is I think we have to get into whole bean grinding. I think we've got to bring in, you know, some more equipment. But we're not, I also don't want to bring in a ten to $15,000 espresso machine because, like I said, we're not going to be a coffee concept. And so we're kind of working through that right now. We want to take up our game without getting crazy on the investment uh, and just make something more compelling. I also think that we make it more ownable. And so when we look at how uh, you might do a Cinnabon cappuccino or something that really ex uh, extends off our equities, I think will play really well. Like the cinnamon roll iced coffee that we launched 20 years ago does great. And, and it's even reinvigorating that. So I, we haven't figured it out just yet, um, but that, that's kind of where we go. And you know, when we're in non-traditional locations where there's other coffee concepts, their sales jump 10 to 15% when the Cinnabon comes in. So you know, there's, there's something there. And we get a lot of appro people approaching us for licensing Cinnabon for coffee concepts. So it's, and we're the, one of the top selling Keurig cups. So there's something there. We've just got to get it figured out. We're not, we're not there yet. Yes. Yes, and so we, you know, we have because we have multiple, you know, we're a fairly large organization as focus brands. We are pulling that data into kind of a back of back house warehouse data warehouse, big data. Um, we're also building uh, with Sitecore um, a CRM platform where we would own that own that database, and what we're looking at is working with Revel on that front end that's connected to the point of sale that would start to capture that data and then bring it back in. But we definitely are going to be pulling that data into um, uh, different warehouses. I, I don't know if that answers your question, but, but, but we are definitely doing that. Any other questions? Yes. Um, well, we have an inside um, uh, information technology team, but we are working closely with Revel on installs um, and, and rollout. So it's, it's, I'd say it's a collaborative effort, and I think that's what's, that's what's great about it. Um, I think as we gear up, I mean, we're going to be at 100-ish units for focus brands. As that goes to 500, 1,000, you know, we'll probably, probably start to bring more of that support in-house. And as we get smarter because we're not smart enough right now. And that's, that's part of been the pain point, I think, for us. We've, we've maybe been a little out of turn in trying to take too much on too quickly. Um, and, and so, but, but we're getting there. I mean, it's not, there's no house on fire kind of thing like that. I mean, we've definitely got our challenges, but, but we're getting there. Yes? How does it work with the franchises? Can you force it upon them? Do they need to sign up and split the fees with you? Well, you can talk to Scott. No, but I, seriously, I, I don't like to use the word force. But yes, we can if we, if we so choose. But I mean, I choose, you know, in a, in a franchise model, what's most important is that you're delivering returns to your franchisees and that those things that you ask them to do will get them a return on investment. In some cases, they will be required. Um, and I think where we landed with Revel was a, a place of inspiration and agreement and alignment um, that now has become the standard. And so, yes, there are some conversations like, no, we're not going to let you put a micro in because it just, it starts to go against the grain of everything that we're doing now. It's like, okay, well, if we put you over there, then, you know, we're going to be withdrawing support in two to three years. So do you want to buy another, a new one? Or, you know, and then what about uh, uh, our technology? You know, we would talk about um, uh, player link and all the things that we're trying to do. And it just, we, we, we've, we debated a little bit about it and giving some people more flexibility and we've basically landed on, you know what, it just causes way too much work to let people kind of just wander off and do stuff. So we're, 
we're now at the point where we require it, but I think for the most part, um, we've 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 got alignment that they actually want to do it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I would also just think of economic subsidies. Like, do you help them out at all? So, um, not in this particular situation because we they felt like the business case was compelling enough. We are looking at different solutions where because we have so there's Revel and there's PlayerLink and then there's then there's their payment charge, and then there's this, and then there's that. And, and we are considering going to being a consolidator where we would say to a franchisee, this year, your, technolo your monthly technology charge would be $400. And it'll include all these things. Um, and we may even go to a model, we've talked to Rebel about it, where they, there's no capital that way. It's just a lease program, right? You just, it, you, don't, you don't worry about it. This is just a tech charge. And we'll come every year, and we'll say the tech charge is this or this. And, it may, it may be going up, but we're going to be adding in these capabilities, and, and it's just flat, and it, it's very predictable for them. Um, so we are exploring those models. I wouldn't call it a subsidy. Um, I try to avoid... W what we do do is when we do higher risk things, so when we were starting rolling out Revel, we were doing things like participating with Revel, and Revel was great around... You know, we'll, we'll pay for the first couple units or we'll help do risk offsets, but that's only generally for new ventures because I think what happens in a franchise model is if you do a lot of subsidies, is it really a great idea then? Or have you really gotten it right? To me, you want to try to keep it clean where the business case is there for, for, the, for the operator to make the investment. Um, but like I said, and the, the, the other thing I was talking about, tech charges, that aren't really, I don't really think it's going to be subsidies more as it's trying to gain efficiencies and other things. So does that answer your question? Okay, great. Great question. Yes? So I had a company shop, bakery. When you guys talk about your pace and workflow, mm -hmm. um, and trying to, because, yeah, if you're behind on your baking. Forget it, yeah. Forget it. Yeah, we're look, working in algorithms that would look at prior year, past three weeks, sales trends. Um, and there was things that, that, that I saw at KFC that they did that were a lot more expensive. And I think it was, it's basically, yeah, looking at algorithms that do a simple forecast and then allowing the manager to do a simple take it up, take it down. I think, you know, we're trending up or I know there's this thing in town or there's the new Apple store is opening in the mall. I'm going to take my forecast up 20%, and then it, but then it would automatically cascade through on the rest of the mix. Um, and then what it would also do is then call out, okay, uh, this hour, you know, you need to roll three logs, like the one you saw David Muir doing. Got to roll three logs, and then, you know, in 15 minutes, you need to put it in the proofer. And in, you know, in 30 minutes, you need to pull it out and put it off the hot plate, pull what's ever on the hot plate, and put it into a pack. And and so on. So it'll call those things out. Right now, our system is, is Excel. And it's complicated, and it's not easy to use. I, candidly, no one's using it. No one's using it. I mean, it's, when we talk about our brand standards, that is the number one missed item. Are people using Pace? No. No one's using it. Because it's not easy. It's, not, and it's, it's like, you know, you've got to be a math whiz. And so this now automates that and starts calling it out. So we're really excited about it. I think it's going to simplify the bakery. It's going to make us better. I think we're going to sell more. Because um, you know, um, and so that's—I don't know if that gives you the, kind of the gist of, of what that is. Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right. Yeah, we need to move on. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. All right.